And so, yes, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying, but I'm, I'm just saying. Hello, everybody. My name is Nayan. I'm the Black Female Engineer. I provide content for you and inspiring software engineers. And today we are talking about how to get your first six figure job as a software engineer. And may I say happy 2020 to y'all because, oh my goodness, I am feeling quite fantastic quite phenomenal. I am very energized and just so, so ready for 2022 to be the year of change, of getting it, of just working as hard as I can to set up the rest of my life. And I know that sounds like a lot, but to be honest, that's how I feel. And if that's how you feel too, then you are at the right place. Now, huge, huge thank you to Flatiron School for sponsoring this video. Flatiron School, many of you already know, was a coding bootcamp I attended in the summer of 2020. And so we're going to dive into that a little later in the video. But first, let's talk about how to get that coin in 2022. So let's get into it. Number one, first thing you need to do so that you get that six-figure offer is make sure you are learning in-demand coding languages. Now for 2022, according to Berkeley University, the three most in-demand languages will be JavaScript, Java, and Python. So if you are starting to learn how to code now, try to steer towards these three languages. And I actually had steered toward Python and JavaScript when I was first learning. And well, look at us now. So yes, make sure you are learning the most in-demand languages because you want to make sure that when your resume gets to the doors of these hiring managers that they see, okay, so they are well-versed and up-to-date with languages that we need the most. And so like, come on over here. So yes, make sure you're learning the most in-demand languages. Number two, make sure you're packing your resume with transferable skills and projects. Whatever roles or experience you have or you have obtained in the past, see how you can make it work to show how that would make you a fantastic software engineer. And so when you think, okay, so let's say I've been a, a barista for the last five years and you may think, okay, well, this has nothing to do with software engineering and you know, it's just not going to work for me. Like, no, you are wrong. And I'm going to show you why. So you've been a barista. That likely means that you are fantastic at communicating with others, both customers and higher ups like managers and whatnot. One, you also are likely really great at handling multiple tasks at one time. Two, on top of that, I would bet you are fantastic at handling yourself in high pressure situations. Three, right there, I just gave you three skills to highlight on your resume to show employers why you would be a fantastic software engineer. And the reason this is important is because a lot of employers will look at your resume and your past experience when trying to figure out what type of offer package to give you. And so we don't want them to think, oh, so they have no you know, previous experience and so let's give them this low ball offer and call it a day. We want to show them like, yo, I know I'm new to this field of software engineering, but I have a ton of skill that I will be using in this job to make me a great great software engineer. And so that is why you want to do that. Now going to the project side, projects are a fantastic way to show that you are well versed in a language or technology. Now, what if you're thinking, okay, well, that's great, Naya, but how am I even gonna do this project? Like I can't even print hello world on the terminal. Like how am I gonna get there? Well, that is where our amazing sponsors, Flatiron School, comes in. Flatiron School is a coding bootcamp that really wants to make sure that you develop all the skills necessary to make sure that you come out a desirable hire. And that includes through the making and building of projects. Like I said, I went to Flatiron School and I came out having built four projects all of which I had put on my resume. And I actually didn't make any other projects other than the ones I built in Flatiron School because they were, in my opinion, fantastic because Flatiron School equipped me with the tools necessary to build these amazing projects to show to employers. And so definitely don't let another year go by where you're doing just the same old thing and just coasting through life. I mean, if you want, if that's what you desire in life and love and everything, then sure. But 
I'm thinking you clicked on this video because you actually, like me, want 2022 to be the year of change, where you are setting up everything you need for your future. And the thing is, I'm talking about like for your future, but with Flatiron School, you're actually able to go from barista to software engineer in as little as 15 weeks. Yeah, yeah, that was the case for me. I started June, I wanna say 22nd of 2020, and I finished my bootcamp October 2nd of 2020, and that was actually the day I got my first ever job offer. So, like, come on, y'all. Like, at the end of the 15 weeks, you still have most of 2022 left to live your life and everything. And so to me, that sounds like an amazing deal. And so let's say you do love the idea of working in tech, but software engineering isn't for you. That is completely fine because Flatiron School actually offers three other courses to pick from, from data scientist to cybersecurity to product design. And so when you think about all of that, I don't know, to me, there's not much of an excuse to not at least try. And if you do want to at least try, Flatter School also is allowing you all, if you click on the link below, to try multiple lessons for free. Free, free, free. Now you're able to dabble in these different courses and see which one resonates most with you. Because at the end of the day, this is your life. So you want to make sure that you actually are going to be enjoying what you're learning in Flatiron School. And this is the perfect opportunity to do so. And if you apply today with the link in the description box below, by May, you can be calling yourself an employed software engineer. Isn't that insane? Like, to me, that's insane. Uh, that's, that's, insane and so yes make sure that 2022 is the year of you the year of change the year of doing everything you need to do to make sure that you are waking up just so happy and in love with your life and your work and your day to day your monday well maybe not monday i'm not i'm not too in love with my monday um but her and I are acquaintances now. But anyway, back to the whole subject. So find a day with the link in my description box below and see what all can happen in 2022. So now let's go to number three. Just now, that was transferable skills and projects. Number three, think about location. Location, location, location. So when you think about the offers people get for different roles in general, it does not come as a shock to many of us that bigger cities offer larger salaries and pay than smaller ones. Side by side comparison here. According to Indeed.com, if you get a job as a software engineer in New York City, your salary would likely come out to a little over $125,000. Thousand. Oh my goodness, that's just so much money. So $125,000 was about 126 actually. But if you get the exact same role in Oklahoma, your salary comes out to a little over $75,000. That's insane. That's wild. That's $50,000, right? Yes, wow, I was a finance major. $50,000 right off the bat simply because of location. And so you definitely wanna consider what specific locations you're applying to when you are applying for your roles. Now, I know, I know, many of you will be saying, hey, Naya, girl, um, it costs way more money to live in Manhattan, New York than it does Oklahoma. You're correct. You, you, you got me. You are correct. However, one thing about these last two, two years is we have seen that we are able to do our work most, most of the time from anywhere, especially a tech job. And so when we consider the idea of being able to work from home or work anywhere in the country but being paid this big city salary then we're like okay or i'm i keep saying we me i'm like okay yeah maybe applying to jobs in new york city is the uh is the move and i'm actually speaking from experience my job i actually had the ability to work pretty much anywhere in the country i chose la because i'm 23 and wanted 
the lifestyle, but the cost of living and everything, I definitely feel it more than I would in Albuquerque. And so, so think about that and remember that when you are job hunting and make sure that those are questions you ask because top Fortune 50 companies are allowing their employees to work from home forever. Forever, 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 forever. And so, yeah, definitely ask about that in your interviews and say, okay, so yeah, I'm applying for this job based in San Francisco. Can I go up here in Nebraska and call it a day with the salary? Definitely don't ask it like that. But yes, definitely ask those questions because some companies, you get the salary without getting that pain and hurt of a huge, huge cost of living. And number four, Lastly, but definitely, definitely, definitely not least, is you want to make sure you are networking. Network not only because that cements your odds of getting the role of being picked and chosen for this new job of yours, but through the relationships you build networking, one of the questions you may ask is, how much can I expect to earn at so-and-so company? My door just opened. That was pretty creepy. That was that was pretty creepy. The door just like swung open. So anyway, through these relationships you build, one of the questions you may feel compelled and comfortable asking is, hey, how much can I expect to earn at so-and-so company for this role? Either maybe the person actually works at that company that you are currently in the recruitment process for, or they know of a person or they just know the industry. But after certain time of being in this in this field and talking to different people you know the industry and so you just kind of know certain things about things like pay and so definitely ask those questions because by asking and seeing what you expect it can definitely increase your confidence for going into negotiations if you know that the average is actually around 130 for this company and they come to you with 98 you can say hey may i pretty please get that hundred 30. And so make sure that throughout your learning process, not even when you start the job hunt, but throughout your learning process, throughout your job hunt and active interviewing, make sure you are building these relationships with other individuals and ask these types of questions because truly, truly, they can make all the difference. And so there we go, everybody. My tips for how to get that six figure offer with out even a computer science degree. Again, make sure you check out the link in my description box and apply to Flatiron today because again, if you start today in as little as 15 weeks, you can look back at this video and be like, wow, wow, I really did that. Here I am now, pen in hand, about to sign my six figure offer. And it all just took watching a YouTube video for how exactly I can get here. But hopefully you have a great day and yeah, I will speak to you all very, very soon. So no, thank you. Bye.